Okay, so part three on this $69.99 laptop from TikTok, the cheapest seller on I could buy. We've optimized Windows 10, managed to install Windows 11, and also installed Chrome OS Flex, which actually works really good on this laptop. Let's try a bit of Linux. Now I'm a big fan of KDE as a desktop environment and Kubuntu comes with this as standard. I know it's not the lightest of desktop environments you can install, but I really like the functionality of it. So let's click on this one, which will take us to the page. I'll put these links in the description. And this is the version that I've downloaded, 64-bit AMD desktop image. Uh, it mentions Core 2. Uh, it's all a bit confusing this, but uh, it works absolutely fine with the Celeron processor. So click on that and download it. I've already downloaded it and it is in my files. So if we go to downloads, you can see kubuntu.iso. Now we need to change this to .bin because the way we're gonna do this from the Chromebook, we're gonna use the Chromebook recovery. So we need it to think it's a bin file. So let's rename this and change it to .bin. Okay, that's all we need to do on that. Then what we need to do is go to the Chrome store and type in Chromebook recovery. And it's this one here. And let's add to Chrome and add extension. Now we need to click on the extension and launch it. And then we need to click on this cog at the top here. And we need to plug in a USB stick. I'm gonna use my Orico one again. And I've just noticed from the screen capture that it's looking very warm. So I was messing about with settings and I turned on night light. Now the display is quite a cold display on this laptop and the warmth just gave it a bit more color, a bit more depth, but I can see on the screen capture it looks awful. So I put it back to normal. Right, arrays recovery media. So this is gonna erase the USB stick that I've just plugged in, my Orico drive. Hit continue, it's nice and quick to do this. And hit okay. Now we need to launch Chromebook recovery utility again. Click on the cog, use local image. You can see it's already in my downloads folder, but if it didn't show up in your downloads folder, just double click on downloads. And you can see here the file that I renamed to .bin. And let's hit open. And select the media again. And hit continue. And that's going to create a Kubuntu setup USB stick. So we'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so that's all done. Let's hit OK and shut down the Chromebook. And let's power on and start tapping F7. That will take us to the boot menu. So now I can select my USB stick and hit Enter. Then we need to select Try or Install Kubuntu. And we can see that's starting up with this splash screen. So let's pick Install Kubuntu. And you need to click rather than tap on the mouse pad. I can enable tap uh, in a minute, but at the moment you have to hard click. So let's go for UK and hit continue. I'm not gonna worry about the network at the moment. Let's do normal installation. And you can see that it's picked uh, guided and also it's already picked my EMMC drive. So I can just hit install now. That's gonna overwrite Chrome OS Flex. I can always go back to Chrome OS. And it gives us a little warning, so let's hit continue. Pick UK and continue. And I'm gonna leave it that it requires my password to log on so it's a bit more secure and hit continue. So now it's gonna install it all to the EMMC drive. And we get this slideshow which shows you various different things that come already in this version. Steam, VirtualBox, all sorts of things. Installation is complete, so now I can unplug the USB stick and click on Restart Now. And we shouldn't have to do anything on this restart, it should automatically restart in Kubuntu. Okay, seems to be stuck, so I'm gonna press and hold the power button to force it off. There we go, and boot it up again without the monitor in, just so it's the normal laptop. Coda Kubuntu has shown up, that's looking good. So that's all booted up, but at the moment, if you try and tap on something, nothing happens. You have to actually click it to make it happen. I'm not a big fan of that. So let's start typing touchpad and click on that. And then we've got tap to click which also enables right click with two fingers, which works perfectly. 
So let's hit apply on that. And I don't need to I don't need to click anymore, so I'm just gonna tap from now on. Much better. And right click with two fingers works great as well. Next up, I'm gonna turn off the compositor. So if I press the Windows key, it doesn't come up super quick. Uh, and that's because it's got all sorts of fades and effects and things like that. So if I start typing compositor and then click on it, I can then disable it on startup. And let's apply that. And I'm gonna reboot just to make sure that's applied. So now if I press the Windows key, it comes up quicker and if I flick through the various different applications and games and graphics and so on that are here, I need to install the Chrome browser. I prefer that to Firefox, uh, multimedia, Office Suite. So say I wanted to launch uh, LibreOffice Writer, which is like Microsoft Word. You can see that it launches very, very quickly and you're in and uh, up and running very, very fast and that closes down nice and quick as well. Okay, so I've been playing around with this and uh, it's been really impressive. So let's launch a few things. Software Store, let's launch the File Browser, let's launch Raspberry Pi Imager, the Chrome Browser which I've installed and also the PlayStation Emulator which I've installed as well. And you can see, uh, well it remembered where the Raspberry Pi Imager was put. I'd put that on the bottom uh, screen when I did it before. And you can see that these have been snapped into place. Uh, so we can snap it into a corner. Uh, or whatever we want and if we want to go full screen let's just do that so if we go to YouTube and launch that and then if I go to my channel when this is loaded up it's usually pretty quick the PSP video and we'll click on my logo and this is with all these other apps open at the same time and uh, it's still performing pretty well let's just pause that so we haven't got the sound of it but uh, under playlists, I have a playlist on KDE Plasma for customization. It's this one here, uh, my new desktop. So if you want to do this sort of thing, but essentially it revolves around, well, if I press the Windows key and start typing theme, you can see uh, we've got global theme here. And once you launch that, you've got so much customization. I've downloaded Windsor Dark and Windsor Light. Uh, but I've also downloaded some icons as well. And the current set I'm using is called 11. Uh, so it's like a Windows 11 set of icons. And I really like it. I think it looks really smart. Uh, but let's just close that bit down and show you down the bottom. We have all sorts of options here. So we've got notifications. So it's telling me that updates are available. It won't apply the updates on its own. It will wait for you to do it, which I think is the best way to do updates, apart from maybe the way Chrome OS does it. We also have a clipboard, uh, which any text or images or anything that you copy and paste will remain in there. You can delete it if you want, but I find it really useful sometimes to go back on things. Obviously, this deals with the sound side of things. It tells me how much battery life I've got. I can also change the brightness to help that. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and this closes the pop-up. If I plug a USB stick in, which I'm just doing now, uh, it will come up with an icon to show me that someone's plugged in, and I really like the way it does this. So it shows you what you just plugged in, and if you click on it, it will give you the option to open it, and uh, that will just open it in the file browser, but I just find that really useful. You know, if you plug in a USB stick, generally you want to access it, and I like the way it deals with that, and if you end up with loads of partitions, They'll all show up in here. And just, just the overall look and feel is excellent. I know I can go lighter with Linux, but I think actually on this laptop, it's powerful enough to be able to use KDE Plasma. And uh, so I'm, I'm gonna stick with it for a while. I'm gonna do some retro gaming, uh, but I'm probably just gonna install that to a separate SSD drive and run it from that. I'm gonna keep this operating system on the EMFC drive. So let's close a few of these things down. I really need to... Um, put some PlayStation uh, games on here, uh, PSP games. So let's drag that up because that was on my second screen. I'm gonna close down Raspberry Pi Imager. So this is the only thing I've got running because I, I really don't know how well this will run. Now, if I go into the USB, uh, you can see that I can remove this and I'm gonna eject the USB stick that I plugged in because I don't want that. And I'm gonna plug in a USB stick which has got some games on it. Okay, so that's plugged in, so that should show up on the right-hand side, and it does. We can click on it, 
and we can open and then I can navigate to the ROMs that are on here so they're in Retropie mount and ROMs, I like this folder set, I like the bright yellow, I think it looks really nice uh, I've also changed the, the mouse to do it that when I put two things on the trackpad and push up uh, that moves the page up which is like using a tablet because I use an iPad so much I prefer to do it that way so PSP uh, let's try Grand Theft Auto Vice City which I generally try so let's copy that I'm going to put it in my documents folder because I can find it with PSP and paste that in and you can see down the bottom it gives me uh, an update of what it's doing with the files this is running, it's actually a, an SD card in a USB 2 adapter, so this process will be a bit slow. But then, what size are we looking at? So we go to properties. So it's 500 megabytes. We get this little icon down the bottom to show us that there's something functioning on that. And also with the PSP, we've got it that it shows that that's what's using the volume at the moment. All these little touches are really nice. Okay, so that's done. So now I can navigate to it and I can never I never find it that easy to navigate with PSP. Ah, here we go. Documents. GTA. I need to plug in a controller. So before I do that, I'm going to eject. Not that you need to do this, but uh, I'm going to eject it that way. And unplug. Plug in my Xbox 360 wireless controller adapter and switch that on. Uh, oh, and that's working straight away with the Xbox controller. So here is my Xbox adapter, my Xbox controller. You can see there's nothing on the bottom screen at the moment. I'm doing everything on the top screen because I'm screen capturing. And so if I want to launch the game. So I haven't changed any settings on this at all yet, but I do need to configure the controller. So is it going to be fine without doing anything at all to it? I'm thinking it probably will be. Yeah, so at one times PSP, which is very low resolution because the PSP is a very small screen, that feels absolutely fine. So let's try it at two times PSP because that will start to look much, much better straight away. So no frame skipping on at this stage. Two times and let's go back. Oh yeah, it's absolutely fine even at two times PSP. I don't think it's struggling. I can't hear any audio glitches. All right. Dropped a little bit then, but that's pretty respectable. I would definitely play it at this sort of settings. Yeah, happy with that. Okay, so at this stage, I'm still very impressed. Uh, it's working really well. I really like the way it looks. Uh, what more can I do with this laptop? Well, next up is going to be a bit of retro gaming. Haven't decided which system to run yet, but I'll do that in the next video. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.